what's going on guys and cheers to you because it is last call that's right the last call show it's our last show of the week it's happy hour and the best show because we are covering pre-foc books we're going to pick 10 books that we like that are hitting final order cutoff this coming monday we're going to discuss them on the show here with you right now and if you want to see the full list of all books hitting foc for monday night make sure you head over to simplemanscomics.com and we'll have the whole list there for you to check out but before we get into the picks i have my co-host with me jack DeMeo, aka mr bolo what is going on buddy Oh, well, like you said, Brian, I'm excited for this show. This kicks off that last second attempt to get those books before FOC hits, and it becomes that much more difficult to grab them. We've got that last weekend where these books are available, and there's some great choices here, some major bolos of some books coming out, books I'm really interested in. Right. It's always hard. So many great books at FOC. We t- pick 10 that we look. We pick 10 that we like. We try to make a wide range. We have some spec-worthy books. We have some reading-worthy books. We have some Marvel books. We have some DC. We have some independent, all well-rounded. So pick up a bar stool, grab yourself an adult Kool-Aid, and step up to the bar because we are going to start pre-FOC. And we are starting with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel Hellmouth number one. This is going to have four different covers. We have a regular Jenny Friesen cover. There's also that B cover that you see in the middle, as well as a connecting variant, but there's also a blank sketch variant that we do not have shown on the screen right now. Right. Now, this is a book we've talked about for a while. Um, We've talked about Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel books quite often on this channel, haven't we, Brian? Yes. And I think that a lot of that stems from the excitement that Arun Singh brought to the channel when we did those initial interviews. Now, we've talked about Arun Singh and his appearances on our channel several times, and I think that that is an example of meeting a guy um, and talking to him and his excitement translating to us because both Brian and I, in full disclosure, we really didn't grow up Buffy or Angel fans. It's not really our thing, the the original TV shows um, and those original comic series. But in talking to him, he got us to at least check out the new comics. After checking out the new comics... We both enjoyed them. They were a little different than we expected them to be. I think um, they're different than the original releases. And this is something major for Boom Studios. This is the first big crossover event in this new Buffyverse. And Boom is putting their entire marketing effort into this. And you got to understand, I talk about this on the channel, guys. Follow the money. So Boom is putting major money, major effort into this. You see that with the Jenny Fritzen cover A. If they're bringing in a cover heavyweight like Jenny Frizen for their cover A, you know that they're putting their money behind this series. And you know the fact that Arun Singh was on this channel how many months ago talking about this release that does not drop for another like almost 30 days that they are all in on this one. So again, we're not trying to sell you on something if you're not interested in it, but we are trying to let you know what we see in the market. And this is one that has had our attention for a while. Right, he was back there on the show. He was on this channel talking to us about this back in July, telling, letting us know it was coming, letting us know how big of an event this is going to be. So if you're a fan of Buffy, if you're a fan of Angel, this is definitely one one book you want to have on your radar because it's hitting FOC this Monday night. And shout out to Caitlin at Cat, uh, Cat Run Figures because I know she's a big Buffy fangirl, and this is one book she's been excited about. So shout out to her for it. Without a doubt. Then the next book we're going to talk about tonight, heading FOC on Monday night, is from Aftershock. And we were talking about Shoplifters Will Be Liquidated. It's going to have a regular cover as well as a 1 in 10 incentive variant. But we kind of like the premise of this book, don't we, Jack? Yeah, I definitely do. I have talked about this on the channel quite often. I come from the world of retail. I come from the world of sneaker sales. Um, And this book, the premise of it is, what if Judge Dredd worked for Amazon? And the idea is loss prevention. What if we live in a capitalistic society where loss prevention agents hold a whole different position in society? Well, let me tell you something. This had to be written by somebody who worked retail. Because if you've ever worked retail, when those loss prevention agents walk into your store, that makes you kind of tighten up in the backside. Um, You know that something is up or something is about to be up. So the idea that these people are the ultimate enforcers that's something I can relate to. It seems funny and interesting. 
And this book piques my interest right off the bat. Now, we've talked about Aftershock books, Brian, on a couple of our other programs. I mentioned that I have an Aftershock problem, that I keep buying up these Aftershock books, going for those 1 in 10 incentives, and the last few haven't really performed. But you know what? I don't think I'm ready to give up my problem. This is another one that's kind of got my attention. All right. I mean, I just like it for the premise alone. looks like a fun story to read. And then, of course, with that... I do that too where I see that regular cover, but then I see, oh, there's a 1 in 10 for it. You see a 1 in 10, a lot of times you can get that for like $6. So you kind of do the math where you automatically try to put yourself ahead. So I'm going in for the 1 in 10 on this as well, where the chips may fall. If it keeps with the trend, we might not see much return on that 1 in 10, but for 6 bucks, what the heck? Who knows what will be optioned, what will actually come to fruition at one time. So either way, it looks like a great story, so definitely pick it up pre-FOC. Right, and the story definitely sounds like something that could be optioned. Uh, definitely sounds like, uh, it, wouldn't it be funny if it was optioned by, by Amazon and it ended <laughs> yeah. up on the Amazon Prime Network? Plus, you know me, I'm a G.I. Joe guy. Antonio Fuso does a lot of G.I. Joe covers, so pretty cool. Then the next book we're going to talk about tonight is one from the big two, and we're talking about DC's Batman's Grave number one. This has got three different covers for it. We have a regular Brian Hitch cover. There's also a regular price Blink variant, which we don't have on the screen, but there is a cardstock variant as well. All right, and this has a cool concept. You're bringing together Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. That's the creative team behind Authority, and they're coming in here to tell a 12-issue miniseries, kind of a large size miniseries, but they're coming together to tell this specific story. And this one focuses on the detective in Batman. And, you know, there's some major teases going on in this one. And this is where the part that maybe speculators want to pay attention to. First off, the series is called Batman's Grave. Um, I don't know if this is, I'm assuming this is monthly. So we're looking at about a year-long story. Um, and they tease the possibility of Batman dying in the series. Um, the solicits, no matter where you read them, whether you're reading them on a website like Bleeding Cool, Newsarama, or you're reading them directly from previews, they all say that they don't really know whether this is continuity or kind of an Elseworlds story. Either way, here's the, where I want to bring the spec in. What has been talked about over the last week? The idea of Batman dying and then bringing in African-American Batman. And I'm not saying this is going to be that story that brings it in. I just think it's real interesting that on the heels of that news and that discussion, we now have a story that 12 months from now, which is what they said, they said it would be an event around 2020 leading into 2021. Uh, We now have a 12-month story that will lead to quite possibly Batman's death. So that's just something to pay attention to, and that's what gives this one kind of makes my speculator – spidey senses my peter tingle go off a bit for this one um i like that i like the variant covers warren ellis writing can be top notch some of his stuff i like some of it i don't but when he's hitting he's hitting on all cylinders so this is one to pay attention to in my mind yeah you mentioned warren ellis writing i that for me is like the main purpose of picking this book up especially if you're talking about something as dark as batman's grave and then you have a writer like warren ellis who's that's his like his element of writing those dark like deranged type stories right that has me picking this up so this is going to be hitting foc monday night and hitting stores october 9th 2019 right wouldn't you say brian this one's gone a little bit under the radar yes yeah because there's so many different batman titles i mean you're gonna hear a lot of people say oh how many batman titles do we need but these stories like this especially a maxi series where it's 12 issues Hey, right. i'm down i mean this is something that's on the normal dc comic line it sounds in the synopsis reads to me like something you'd almost see on the black label but we're not seeing it yeah yeah that that's why i'm interested in it absolute carnage number four this is the penultimate issue of this mini series there's gonna have a regular cover you're also gonna have a one in 100 incentive virgin vein of that regular cover there's a 1 in 25 Cult of Carnage Nick Bradshaw variant. There's a regular price John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. There's also a Kyle Hotz regular price connecting variant. There's a regular price Young Guns Mundo variant, which is that classified cover you're seeing on the screen right now. There's also a Ron Lim variant, as well as a 1 in 200 Virgin variant of that Ron Lim variant. 
Yeah, so this is this book is an example of why this pre-FOC show made sense for us, Brian. Um, there are some signs in this solicitation that tip me off that this is a must pre-order. Don't wait for this to hit shelves and try to chase this. Now, you would think absolute carnage. This is a no-brainer. Everybody sees this coming, right? But here's the thing. First off, the solicitation gives some stuff away. And I'm essentially just going to read it to you so you see what we see. And it says, Eddie Brock has taken a beating, lost allies closest to him, and after the shocking events of Absolute Carnage 3, so be on the lookout for Absolute Carnage 3, which is coming very soon, obviously something's going to happen, sees no way to take Cletus Cassidy down once and for all without making the ultimate sacrifice. Are we talking about Eddie's death here? But what is the ultimate sacrifice? Of the two beings bonded as Venom, what? Two beings bonded as Venom? Which will make it out alive? So now we feel like somebody's going to die. Somebody else is bonded as Venom. Um, could this be the Maker? Could this be Dylan? Um, we don't know what's going on. Sleeper? We, we really don't know. Um, but then we look at... You talked about the variants. Brian, we've talked about this on the channel. When they bring out a 1 in 200 and a 1 in 100, and they didn't do that for issue 2, did they? No. No, so issue 1 had that stuff, which you'd expect. That's your, your debut issue in a new series. They're trying to sell it. They're trying to make sales of this issue. So that makes me wonder, why are they so keen on making sales of this issue? Something huge is going down in Absolute Carnage 4. I can just feel it. Then you've got the classified variant, which means something is going to happen that they don't want us to see yet. They don't want to spoil something. When those classified variants come out, that's what they're doing. If you think back to the Absolute Carnage Miles Morales book... And we had that classified image, and a lot of people took a flyer on that. They took a chance, and they ended up getting the cover image with the first appearance of the Miles Morales doppelganger. That's what this reminds me of. So we're talking about two people bonded as Venom, two beings as Venom. Um, we're talking about somebody dying, quite possibly. Um, you look at the cover art, there's a lot going on. I think that classified cover is one to be on the lookout for. You're talking about a Young Guns variant, so it would be a regular price variant. And also just the book in general. Whether you decide you want to get in on some of these variants, or whether you just think that the events of the book are going to make cover A be a $15 to $20 book, this is why we have this show. Because these are the things that people like Brian and I who have been doing this for a number of years, when we read solicits like this, when we see these kinds of variants being offered, it makes our speculator radar go up. And we want to share that with you guys, the Simpleman's Comics family. And this is why I'm excited to bring the show to you guys every Friday night, right here, 9 p.m., Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. Then the next book we're going to talk about tonight, we are going to talk about that snake hunt. That's right, G.I. Joe number 267. This is going to have that regular A cover, as well as that B connecting action figure variant and a 1 in 10 incentive variant for this. Yeah, and anyone who knows me knows I'm a G.I. Joe guy. I talked about G.I. Joe 266 at length, as did you, Brian, right here on the Sibylins Comics YouTube channel. And this was my long-term pick of the week, the week that 266 released in stores. And I admitted that the story was a little underwhelming. It just started off kind of slow. So I am ready for 267. I know that this is when the action's going to kick up. The solicitation talks about Cobra Commander thinking that Sean Collins is the Snake Eyes. And, you know, he's wearing that Snake Eyes costume in 266. Cobra Commander spying on him. So it looks like he wants to kind of grab up, and that's where the whole snake hunt term comes in. He wants to kidnap Sean Collins and try to use mind control, put him on the Cobra team. And we know that there's another Snake Eyes, Dawn Moreno, who has the original Snake Eyes consciousness implanted in her brain, and that is going to play out throughout this story. We're looking at a 10-issue mega event from idw and i gotta say brian that john royal one in ten incentive variant to me is a winner that thing is gorgeous that is the one i will be absolutely looking for on release day right i love the cover on that and just imagine if something really pops off in this issue how much that cover would be regardless of what the story does we were talking about right before we were filming this how great that one in ten cover is so that would be one thing i would definitely try to pre-order before monday night's foc Definitely, and I'll, you know what? I'm going to even throw some speculation in that cover. You know, I'm a big G.I. Joe fan, but I don't know everything. The G.I. Joe lore is so large. I don't know who that cover is on the cover, who that is on the cover of 
the incentive cover. And I even wonder, is that Sean Collins wearing the, the Cobra garb? Could that be what where we're going with this story? We know that he's going to end up getting captured by Cobra. We know he's going to end up getting some form of mind control. But either way, that is a cool cover. Tell me, Brian, that doesn't scream 80s. Definitely screams 80s, and that's, I think, why we have such the, the feels for it. Now, yes. is that those um, those twins? Remember the Yo, that? Yes, that could be. That could be. Um, and again, that those twins were trained by the original Snake Eyes. And, you know, we're going to bring in, this story's going to bring in every G.I. Joe character ever created. So that's the great thing about this is we're going to get to see all of these kind of obscure and smaller yeah. G.I. Joe characters. Um, and they're going to get their part in this story. That's how big this mega event is. So how cool is this? I love that cover. And I got to be honest with you, man. I'm a G.I. Joe guy, but I'm kind of partial to Cobra. Yeah. It's funny. I think G.I. Joe is one of those cartoons growing up that you always root for the bad guys. Just because yeah. they always seem cooler. Definitely. Definitely. But yeah, that's definitely one book that we like. And hits FOC Monday night as well. Watcher number three. This is from Zenoscope. It's been one of their hot titles recently. We've had it on the bullet list in the reader bus section. I, as in the bullet show, mentioned story is good, but what I really like on these is the freaking covers on the cover A and cover B. It's both are regular priced, but what do you think about these freaking covers, Jack? Amazing. I kind of like cover A a little bit better. Uh, I think that that fire in the foreground and background is incredible. But you know what? You're absolutely right. This is the final issue in the three-issue miniseries. Um, and it's going to be real interesting. This was a successful series for Zenoscope. Will they bring this back? Will they kind of Mignola-verse style do another miniseries? Will they extend this out into a ongoing? Or are they just going to take the W and uh, take their ball and go home? We'll have to see. Either way, issue one had a lot of buzz on it. Issue two sustained some solid buzz. And I expect issue three to do pretty well. And here's the thing. This is the reason why this book's on the, sh on the show. This isn't a huge spec pick. But you're not going to be able to find this book readily at your LCS on release day. We had a lot of people comment on the Bolo show when we talked about issue number two and said they, they could not find this issue at their LCS at all. Um, Zenoscope books, some LCSs don't order them at all. And um, some are ordered just extremely sparingly, and some are only ordered for pull list customers. So this is one that if you want to grab this cover A and cover B, or there's one of the covers that you favor, absolutely this is the book where you may want to pre-order it, pre-FOC. And that's why we put it on this show, and that's why I love the last call show right here on the Civil Mids Comics YouTube channel, because this is where we get to highlight books like this that may fly under your radar. Right, it's not going like, to be your super spec investment book of the year, but it is a good story. Those covers are great, and as he mentioned, a lot of LCSs aren't ordering this book. So if you want to get it and you want to read it, that's why we have it in the video, and that's why you want to get it. Order in before FOC on Monday night. Powers of X number six. This is going to have a bunch of different covers for it. As usual, you're going to have your regular cover, your action figure cover, your new character cover, your connecting cover. But there's one also to take note of. There's a classified. That's going to be interesting to see. But what do you have to say about this book, Jack? Well, yeah, so the, these books have followed a trend. First off, Mad Reader Buzz. Every issue, everyone loves them. Um, you know, we've been kind of, I feel like we've been talking about these books every week. Um, this is the final part for uh, Powers of X, um, you know, there's a 12-issue total series between House of X and Powers of X. So I think a lot of people are going to be on board to see where this ends. But you know what, Brian? I don't want to talk about this just from a reader buzz perspective, which is where we've really put this book when we've talked about it in other shows that we've had. Because I think this issue's got something a little different. First off, you mentioned that classified variant. Again, we just talked about classified variants for Absolute Cards. Now, that doesn't work every time. And I want, I want to really preface that before we get into this discussion because every, every single time they put a classified variant doesn't equal money. But when we're talking pre-FOC, you can get your pre-order in. You can get you a good discount. 
it allows you to hedge your bet on a book. And I feel like if you are grabbing these books at a steep discount pre-FOC, it's worth a shot, at least on a few. The other thing is, when we're looking at these House of X and Powers of X books, Brian, we feel like we've talked about the same covers for each issue. We've talked about the flower variants, we've talked about the connecting covers, and we've talked about those Mike Huddleston 1 in 10 incentives. So since you know that by now, right, you've been watching the shows, you've been paying attention to the market yourself, maybe you've grabbed some and flipped some, by now you know that that's where it's at. That's the beauty of the pre-FOC show, is now you can be ready by getting these orders in so you're not chasing these books at your LCS, trying to find them, and you're not running into a situation where if this book is red hot, if that classified cover is something big, you know how some of these dirty LCSs play games and charge exorbitant prices based on the secondary market instead of the first market, which is what they're supposed to be. Right, and then Jonathan Hickman kind of left some clues, right? Yes, and this is why I'm the most excited about this book, Brian. When you look at this chart, this is what Jonathan Hickman does. He puts these little Easter eggs, these little extra nuggets of information. He put this chart, and there are three random issues highlighted. Now, we also want to bring up the fact that there's how what's it, House of X uh, number five highlighted yes. in there. That's coming out before this book, so be on the lookout for that one for sure for the same reason. These are supposed to be the key issues in this run. And I've never seen an, a writer or an artist highlight books like this before and, and let you know that something major was happening. Um, we've seen teases from the likes of Donnie Cates and such, but this is pretty direct. And we've already seen one of these come into play with um, Powers of X number two. And that was, or excuse me, was it House of X number two? Um, we've already seen that come into play with that was the whole issue where Myra McTaggart came back and we find out that she can reincarnate um, and that she hasn't died. And that issue went crazy. We saw the first appearance go crazy in back issue bins. And to this day, that is one of the hardest to find books in this series. Cover A goes for like $18 to $20 on eBay. So using that information that we already have, I'm saying pay attention to the fact that this book is highlighted in red. There's no way I'm leaving this book out. I think Jonathan Hickman is leaving those breadcrumb trails of greatness for us and letting us know which issues we especially need to be paying attention to and you know what he's had a few speculator teases throughout this book and i feel like jonathan hickman he knows we're out here he knows we're watching he knows we're paying attention and uh he's left these uh little little nuggets of information for us to try to pay attention to as well as all the great reading that the, this series has provided Right, great book. Everyone always knows, hey, House of X is great. Powers of X is great. We're starting to see those wind down. But this is definitely, like you said, like that chart you put up there, is a book to take note of. And make sure you get those orders in by Monday night. Yes. And the next book we're going to talk about is from Image. We've talked about this title on the show a lot too, and we're going to talk about Reaver number four. Issues one through three have come out. They've been great. I've heard mixed opinions. Some people like it. A lot of people are liking the cover art by Becky Cloonan. They're not liking the interior art. I think the interior art is great. I think the story's even better, but I'm excited for Reaver and it's hitting Reaver issue number four is hitting FOC Monday night. Right. And that's why I want to talk about this book, Brian. I want, I've brought this up several times. We've talked about Arun and our interview with him and how he illuminated us to some things. But I also want to talk about James Haig, Scout Comics. Now, this seems like, why is he bringing up James Haig and Scout Comics when we're talking about an image release? Well, Cheers he to talk, James Haig. Yeah, there you go. James Haig. He's a guy who would have had an adult Kool-Aid with us. But um, he is a guy who has really a, a eye on the secondary market for a guy who publishes books. And what he has talked about is the effect of speculators on the industry. And he talked about how issue number one to issue number two, there's a 50% drop off in readership. And that 50%, he feels like, represents the speculation community. Now, some may drop off the series because they didn't like issue number one. But a bulk of it is people who are buying up that issue number one in hopes of being able to flip it later or collect it because they think it's going to be worth more money. And then from issue number two to issue number three, you see a drop off again as people fall off of a series. There's just so many series is released in these books. Tend, they, they tend to fall by the wayside a lot of times. And then issue number three, you see the same thing. Issue number four is the issue where 
order numbers start sustaining. It but looks like we have a death in this issue, though. Right. And so that could be me being – that's what I'm kind of getting at is this could be an issue where orders sustain. We start to see um, these numbers kind of flatten out. And you figure out what the true readership of the series is. All those people who had a problem with the um, the interior art will probably, if they if it's really that strong of a problem, they will have fallen out. And it, with this being an issue soliciting, like you said, with a possible death in it, and this being a series that's had so much buzz on it, I think it's an adaptation waiting to happen. We're waiting for that option announcement. Um, I mean, we're only four issues in, so it's going to take some time. This could be a key issue. With a very low print run. It could be that combination of things. Plus, if you're reading the series and you're into this book, you might as well get your order in pre-FOC and save yourself a little bit of money. Or at least guarantee your copy. And especially if you're ordering through a place where they're guaranteeing near mint copies. Because, you know, a lot of times you're running into the LCS. They're just throwing that book on the shelf real quick. And you're dealing with corner dings, spine damage, etc. So there's a lot of reasons to order pre-FOC and to be ahead of the curve. But... This is one that might get overlooked. You're like, why are you bringing up an indie book, issue number four? We get hammered a lot for talking about Reader Buzz, but we're not going to stop. We get hammered a lot for spending a lot of time talking about indie books, but we're not going to stop. And what we're trying to do is give you a look into what we see when we're paying attention to these solicits and these orders. So like Brian said, the solicit kind of makes us feel like something big is going to happen. And our experience in talking to publishers this is the issue where we're going to see the lowest readership of any of the issues that have been released so far. Therefore, low print run could equal money. Right. And another thing about ordering pre-FOC is you'll see all the time between now and after FOC and then like a week or two leading up to release when some of these major news arama CBR, some of these major – if there is something that's going to pop off in this book, there's going to be an article about it. Yes. I'm not saying there there is or isn't. I don't know what's going to happen in this issue. But if something like that does, you always see an article leading up to it, and then that creates the demand for this book more, even more. It makes it harder to find on New Comic Book Day when it's released. But if you've ordered it pre-FOC, you've already got it for you. Yeah, and if you've never bought Reaver before, Reaver before, if you don't have a Reaver number one, if it's not your type of book, we're really not advocating you jump on issue number four. But if you've already been on Reaver, if it's already been a book on your radar, if you bought number one and maybe you didn't buy two and three, or if you bought number one, two, and three, we're letting you know, don't pick this issue to be the one where you drop off. Maybe you should be paying attention to it. And the specy haters are going to say that they're not going to be that drop off because we're over here talking about it. But we already know a lot of people don't see things the way we see things, but we're just trying to show you in Simpleman's Comics family what we see. We hope that if you guys are viewing this show, that that's what you come here for. You come here for our insight, and that's what we're trying to give you. Again, free of charge. Yep. And story is great because of that the writer is great as well justin jordan couldn't ask for a nicer guy fantastic yeah, really story is. so i'm happy to support him in that way as well heading back over to marvel the next book we're going to talk about for foc is dr doom number one it's gonna have a bunch of different covers for it there's a regular cover, there's a Ditko Hidden Gem cover, there's an Arthur Adams cover, there's a Mary Jane, there's some other covers up there. You know Marvel, lots of covers. But, what's going on with this book, Jack? Well, yeah, and you said lots of covers, and especially with an issue number one. That's just the Marvel way, right? But here's the thing. Villain solo series have not often translated to speculation success. So I'm hiding behind the cover. <laughs> I'm going to preface this by saying that that's not really my thought with this, but those, you know, internet rumor, you know, are flying around that Dr. Doom is going to be the next big bad in the MCU. And to that, I say kind of like, you know, duh, of course, you know, as soon as you bring in Fantastic Four, Dr. Doom's got to be coming and he's no minor villain. You know, when you're talking major, major villains in the Marvel lore, you're talking Doctor Doom, you're talking Galactus. So there's just no doubt the moment Fantastic Four became part of the MCU, we're going to see Doctor Doom, we're going to see Galactus. And I think this is Marvel getting newer readers, the younger crowd, 
used to seeing Victor Von Doom and learning his backstory. The only time I've seen like a villain series really take off really was the Donny Cates run on Thanos. But I don't think that's what we're going to see here. I think this could just be a good reader series. Either way, I'm interested in picking up number one. I'm going to read it. I, it's been a while since I've gotten into Fantastic Four books. I like Victor Von Doom. He's got that human-esque kind of thing. He, obviously, he's human, but you know, it, it, he's a character who sometimes you can really relate to where he's coming from and his perspective on things. So I'm interested in this series. I don't know if I'm the type that's going to be like all in on some of these variant covers, but let us know, Simpleman's Comics family. Are there any of these, the art stands out to you? Are there any of these books you're paying attention to? But I'm telling you, we're going to be talking a lot of Dr. Doom coming in the coming months and the coming years. Yep. And it's got that guy from Nip Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, wasn't he the one that played Doom in the, in the Fantastic Four yeah. movie? Yeah, in the original the original <laughs> series. Yeah. I definitely imagine they're going to recast. We've heard rumors about uh, Li, uh, Liv Shriver, um, who of course played Sabretooth previously. Uh, we've also heard r- rumors of Vigo Mortensen. So they could go in a lot of directions with that. Yeah. Yeah, and let us know in the comments which one of those covers are you guys liking. I, I mean, me, Ditko, that hidden gem Ditko is kind of one, but you never know. What the, pr- the prices are always so astronomical on some of those. Uh, cover A is usually the easy go-to, plus that way you just get to read the story. Um, so I'll probably end up getting mostly cover A for myself. Yeah, and if you really like those Dickos, a lot of times be patient. Yeah. Um, if you look at how, how much they go for couple months later a lot of times those those uh remastered those hidden gems whether it's dicko kirby mcfarland whoever it is that they're doing they tend to drop in price sticking with marvel we are talking about the facsimile edition of amazing fantasy number 15 I like this because they had that True Believers that came out, right? True Believers edition came out. But it just says, I mean, True Believers all over it. Me, I like this being the facsimile edition because it's basically a newer version of that old book. Same, you know, cover. Now that True Believers gaudiness trade dress over there. Uh, That's what has me wanting to order this. But it's your chance to order a classic book that a lot of people can't get. For a cheap price, and then just say, "Hey, I see, this is one like the one the Hulk 181 facsimile came out. I got a 98 of that because that's probably the closest I'd get to a 98. Hulk 181 was the facsimile edition. This is something similar. Amazing Fantasy number 15. I would like to get a 98 of this facsimile edition, just to say, just to have it for novelty's sake. Yeah, it's just too bad they didn't do a Hulk 180, right? The real first appearance." <laughs> But, you know, I'm getting in trouble with that one. But anyways, Brian, I agree with your logic. Um, another thing is the paper quality on those True Believers is kind of inferior. And you get kind of a better paper quality with these um, these facsimiles, as you should, since they cost four times the price. But there's a couple things I've noticed about these facsimiles. First off, um, obviously, if you want an opportunity to read these books, there's a lot of people, a lot of people who got into comics in the last 10 years it's not easy for you. These, some of these key issues, you may never have read Amazing Fantasy 15. You may never have read Hulk 181 or Giant Size X-Men number one or the regular X-Men number one. Um, these may not have been books that you have ever had the opportunity to read. Now you have that opportunity and you can do it for a real low price at like $4. Secondly, um, I've noticed at shows and conventions that these books sell very well. So eBay, you get you have to deal with a lot of competition. But if you're the type who, and we do have a lot of those people out there in the Simpleman's Comics family, um, and I've advocated if you're not, if you're doing a lot of business on eBay, you should look at some local shows. Look at setting up at some local shows. Um, a lot of people at shows sell the same kind of product. They sell a lot of old silver and, and, and gold and bronze. If you're a modern person, you can create a little niche for yourself. I've done that, and I think that some of you out there can do that. But that's the cool thing about these kind of books. They regularly bring in $10 for me at conventions. Um, And I think that they will do that for quite some time. Um, And the beauty of ordering pre-FOC, you can get it at the lowest possible price. If you can get 
a good chunk off that cover price and you're in there well below four and you can flip to 10, that's pretty good. You may not be able to get that right out the gate, but if you can build into that, it's even better. And um, I, I know that at some point that giant size X-Men popped a little bit. It was up to almost $20. And then I don't know if more copies hit, whether there was reorders on Diamond, uh, whether people got their online orders in and uh, started flooding the market and the price dropped a bit but it's only a matter of time before one of these books gets completely overlooked and ends up hitting that 20 to 25 dollar range either way i like that marvel's doing these they're fun and i'm gonna keep ordering them i've been ordering all of them uh, a small handful of them um not going heavy or hard but i've been grabbing all of them um and i think it's a cool collectible to add to your kind of investment or resale portfolio just buy it. It's facsimile, Amazing Fantasy 15, chance to own a piece of history, FOC, get your damn orders in, and get that facsimile all up in them guts. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> we do have one more Oh By The Way book, and that, of course, is Superman number 16. Why do we like this book? Because I'm a huge fan of the Super Sons. Read both series of that. Was sad to see that last minute, that last maxi, that 12 issue maxi series in. But we are getting a return of Super Sons in Superman number 16, aren't we, Jack? Yeah, definitely. And I agree with you. I'm a big Super Sons fan. Here you get the aged up Jonathan Kent. He's five years older. Um, and I think that that could one day play into major speculation. So I'm all in on the Super Sons. I like cover A. Definitely cover A. Cover A is the one on the left. One on the right is the uh, Year of the Villain cardstock variant. But either way, that's the Oh By The Way book this week. And that's why we like it. Because Super Sons is just badass. John Kent, Damian Wayne. Fun story. Fun read. And love seeing them kick some ass. Yeah, and I tell you what, Brian, I'm going to go ahead and add one more to pay attention to a last second bolo. And this is for my readers out there. Check out Flash number 80. We're talking about a brand new Flash arc. Flash has been serious reader buzz the whole way through the series. Brian, I know you're a big Flash fan. And it looks like Captain Cold is putting a brand new rogues gallery together. Uh, he's going to have the rogues team up to try to hear this offer from Lex Luthor. So that's one that I'm paying attention to as well. But Jack, like we always do, in addition to the books we talked about, there's additional printings that are going to be coming out as well. What have we got this week, Jack? Right. This week, we've got some major spec books coming back for second and third and fourth and all these late printings. First off, we're talking indie titles. Scout Comics' is headless number one is back for a second printing. We've also got that black box release that was a major hit. I'm talking Psycho List number one coming back for a second printing. Next, we've got Image Comics' Sea of Stars number two coming back for a second printing. Definite reader buzz there. And then we, of course, come to Marvel, who is full of these late printings. We've got House of X number four coming back for a second printing. We've got Savage Avengers number five coming back for a second printing. We've got Star Wars Galaxy's Edge number five coming back for a second printing. And then we've, of course, got these absolute carnage tie-ins, which have been incredibly successful, and they're coming back for a second printing. I'm talking about Absolute Carnage Miles Morales number one, Absolute Carnage Scream number two, as well as Absolute Carnage Symbiote Spider-Man number one, all second printing. No burps tonight, guys. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Anyways, bunch of great prints. And so there you have the full listing of new printings coming out. But if you also want to see the full FOC list, make sure you guys head over to simplemanscomics.com. We have the full FOC list there for you. We highlighted the books that we like for FOC, but there's a whole bunch of them. Couldn't possibly talk about each and every one of those books on the show so that's why we create the list at simplemanscomics.com. Make sure you head over there, check it out, and see what books you guys might be interested in. And if you're interested in those, make sure you contact your LCSs or your online retailer and say, hey, I want this book and get it ordered. Make sure you get those orders in Monday night before 10 p.m. Eastern because that is the actual final order cutoff. Yeah, and definitely one last note. Remember, we brought this up last week in the comments section of last week's video. Two books from last week had their FOCs pushed back to this week. So if you didn't get your Joker Year of the Villain orders in, or if you didn't get your Spawn 301 orders in, no fear. This is your last call. Last call. Cheers. And with that being said, guys, 
I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. And cheers to Last Call. But make sure, buy what you like, guys, and that way you'll be happy with what you collect. 